Welcome to this time of informal worship on this Monday the 2nd of October. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. May Christ the day star dawn in our hearts and triumph over the shades of night. Come, let us sing to the Lord, let us heartily rejoice in the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving and be glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. Come, let us worship and fall down and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God. We are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Glory to the Father, to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Blessed are you, Creator of all, to you be praise and glory forever. As your dawn renews the face of the earth, bringing light and life to all creation, may we rejoice in this day that you have made. As we wake refreshed from the depths of sleep, open our eyes to behold your presence and strengthen our hands to do your will, that the world may rejoice and give you praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, Blessed be God forever. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. psalm this morning is psalm number 71 psalm 71 in you o lord do i seek refuge let me never be put to shame in your righteousness deliver me and set me free incline your ear to me and save me be for me a stronghold to which i may ever resort send out to save me for you are my rock and my fortress deliver me my god from the hand of the wicked from the grasp of the evildoer and the oppressor. For you are my hope, O Lord God, my confidence even from my youth. Upon you have I leaned from my birth. When you drew me from my mother's womb, my praise shall be always of you. I have become a portent to many, but you are my refuge and my strength. Let my mouth be full of your praise and your glory all the day long. Do not cast me away in the time of old age. Forsake me not when my strength fails. For my enemies are talking against me, and those who lie in wait for my life take counsel together. They say, God has forsaken him. Pursue him and take him, because there is none to deliver him. O oh God, be not far from me. Come quickly to help me, O oh my God. Let those who are against me be put to shame and disgrace. Let those who seek to do me evil be covered with scorn and reproach. But as for me, I will hope continually and will praise you more and more. My mouth shall tell of your righteousness and salvation all day long, for I know no end of the telling. I will begin with the mighty works of the Lord God. I will recall your righteousness, yours alone. O God, you have taught me since I was young, and to this day I tell of your wonderful works. Forsake me not, O God, when I am old and grey-headed, till I make known your deeds to the next generation, and your power to all that are to come. Your righteousness, O God, reaches to the heavens. In the great things you have done, who is like you, O God? What troubles and adversities you have shown me, and yet you will turn and refresh me, and bring me from the deep of the earth again. Increase my honour, turn again and comfort me. Therefore will I praise you for your faithfulness, O my God. I will sing to you with the lyre, O Holy One of Israel. My lips will sing out as I play to you, and so will my soul which you have redeemed. My tongue will also tell of your righteousness all the day long, for they shall be shamed and disgraced who sought to do me evil. Glory to the Father, to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen.
all the earth shout and sing for joy, for great in your midst is the Holy One. Behold, God is my salvation. I might all trust and will not be afraid, for the Lord God is my strength and my song and has become my salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. On that day you will say, give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the nations, proclaim that his name is exalted. Sing God's praises who has triumphed gloriously. Let this be known in all the world. Shout and sing for joy, you that dwell in Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. All the earth shout and sing for joy, for great in your midst is the Holy One. And so to our reading of Scripture this morning, taken from St Mark's Gospel, and it's chapter 14 and the first 11 verses. <clears throat> Now the Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread were only two days away, and the chief priests and the teachers of the law were looking for some sly way to arrest Jesus and kill him. But not during the feast, they said, or the people may riot. While he was in Bethany, reclining at the table, in the home of a man known as Simon the leper, a woman came with an alabaster jar of very expensive perfume made of pure nard, she broke the jar and poured the perfume on his head. Some of those present were saying indignantly to one another, why this waste of perfume? It could have been sold for more than a year's wages and the money given to the poor. And they rebuked her harshly. Leave her alone, said Jesus. Why are you bothering her? She has done a beautiful thing to me. The poor you will always have with you and you can help them any time you want but you will not always have me. She did what she could. She poured perfume on my body beforehand to prepare for my burial. I tell you the truth, wherever the gospel is preached throughout the world, what she has done will also be told in memory of her. Then Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went to the chief priests to betray Jesus to them. They were delighted to hear this and promised to give him money so he watched for an opportunity to hand him over. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Benedictus, you have set us free to worship you without fear, holy and righteous in your sight. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. You have set us free to worship you without fear, holy and righteous in your sight. Now let us pray together. First the Collect for this week. Almighty God, you have made us for yourself, and our hearts are restless till they find their rest in you. Pour your love into our hearts and draw us to yourself, and so bring us at last to your heavenly city where we shall see you face to face. 
through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And within our prayers, as you will know by now, we seek to bring to God those things that are most upon our minds. And we pray for those we know, particularly members of our own families, those who are close to us. And we commend them to the love of our Heavenly Father. Whatever those needs might be, we pray that God will draw near to them, that he will heal, that he will bless. We name them before God. He knows them and he knows their condition, he knows their situation. We commend them to his love and we pray for our family and our friends. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we come to you and we thank you for the fact that you hear us. You sent the Lord Jesus to be our saviour and our friend and our Lord and our master to demonstrate your love and your compassion and above all to give his life for us and we thank you that you were willing to pay that price that we might be reconciled to our heavenly father and we might know the presence and the power of the living god in our lives we thank you dear lord in the name of the lord jesus amen And we pray for the renewal of the church. Oh, how much we need that today. There seems to be a real departure from, this, from the teaching of the scriptures, a departure from the Lord Jesus, a departure from the way of salvation. People are going their own way, doing their own thing, and imagining it is still Christian. And so we pray for the renewal of the church in faith and love and service. We pray for our bishops, many of whom seem to be wandering from the faith. And we pray that the Lord will draw them to himself, open their eyes and their hearts and their minds. And we pray that there may be a real returning to the love of Jesus and to concerns for him We pray for the life of our parish. We pray for our vicar, our curate, our, min our ministers who come to us, who are part of our congregation, all those who have responsibility within our fellowship. And we thank God for them. Lord, we thank you for the ministry of your word. We thank you for the grace of the sacraments. We thank you for fellowship with your people. And we pray, Lord, that you'll have mercy upon the whole church. We pray for the leadership of our parishes and the leadership of our diocese, the leadership of our national church. Lord, may we come together around your word. You have shown us what, is, what we should be doing and what, how we should be behaving and how we should be believing. And we thank you for the gift of your word to us. Lord, enable us, we pray, to grow more like the life of Jesus in all that we do and all that we think and all that we say. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for the worldwide church. We pray for those who are being persecuted simply because they love Jesus. And there are so many areas of the world. We might think of China and North Korea, but they're only part of it. So many countries in the African state. There's so many countries in the Asian area where the Lord Jesus is not honored. And where Christians, if they are discovered, are persecuted and imprisoned. Lord, we pray for your mercy upon them. We pray for your strength and your grace for them. We pray for our brothers and sisters who may be in prison right now, and we ask that they may know your presence with them. Lord, have mercy, we pray, upon those who persecute. And we pray, loving Father, that you will 
indeed find ways to draw them to yourself and open their eyes to see in Jesus, the Saviour, the giver of life. For we ask it in his name. Amen. Lord, we pray especially for our local community. We pray for everybody in their daily life and work. We pray for the young and the elderly, for the families. We pray for the lonely. And we thank you for all the good things that are going on at the same time. And Father, pray that we may indeed find ourselves focusing upon you and learning from you about life the life that you offer to us in Jesus. Thank you for all that reveals your loveliness within our world. And we thank you for your goodness to us. We pray especially for those who are hungry and homeless and unable to participate in some of the good things of life. We pray for those who are unwell, for those who are in need. And we pray, loving Father, that you will draw close to them. May those who are sick and sorrowful and bereaved know your healing touch upon them. May they know peace of heart, strength of purpose. And we thank you for all who bring comfort and care and healing. And pray, loving Father, for your continued blessing. We thank you for the organisations that help and encourage and bring relief. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. A moment of just being quiet where we can bring to God those things that are most upon our minds and upon our hearts, the things that cause us sleepless nights. We pray that the Lord may bring us peace. And we pray that God will bring his will and purposes to bear in his world. And finally, a prayer from the Diocese of Europe that was compiled a while back, but still seems to apply even today, in the midst of storm and flood and fire. We pray for Barnabas Aid and Tear Fund Operations, Operation Christmas Child. As we pray, be present, O Lord, our Good Shepherd, to bring comfort and relief and shelter and human kindness Shield the people who suffer, console those who are bereaved, prosper the vision of relief, strengthen the work of emergency teams, and shine your light and hope in the midst of despair. And so we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the love and the mercy and the protection of God in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we sum up all our prayers in those words our Saviour taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and for ever. Lord, bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.